Um, but let's get on for uh, another thing, because I want to make sure that we, we share the takeaways from our experiences to the group here so that they can learn from both our, our mistakes, our failures, and our successes so that you know, when we talk about having you guys all leapfrog, we have to be able to share uh, things that you don't have to experience that we did. Should I start, or do you guys want to start? Um, I think many of you have probably heard the expression, if I knew then what I know now, I never would have done this. <laughs> And I think there is definitely truth in that. I'm not saying that at all because I'm very happy that uh, I've done this and it's been very satisfying. But it is, it is a very challenging road to do your own business. It, is, um, it requires a ton of stamina. It's like running a marathon. Um, focus, uh, ability to kind of weather the storm and you're pulled in a million different directions. Uh, you're sacrificing probably personal income as you get it started. So. I think be prepared to make the sacrifices because there are many. Um, but it's your vision, you know, to see, for me, to see my products on the shelf um, and watch. I've gone to the stores. They're sold out actually here in L.A. It's Gelson's and Bristol Farms. Um, and see people actually buy it at the checkout counter is just one of the best feelings I've ever had. So it's well worth it. Um, but just be prepared to really, uh, people, I don't have children yet, but it's uh, apparently like having a baby. <laughs> so a lot of people are in transition and then people you know come out of it in different ways some of i have you heard of founder labs it was started by um the same co-founder of uh, women 2.0 shahar strania and so what they do is we've heard of in incubators accelerators etc and so they really position themselves as a pre-incubator and it was an opportunity for people with full-time jobs to kind of like just dip their toes and see what it would be like to actually start, um, you know, the tech company idea that they had. And what was really cool about it is that it almost uh, worked as a hackathon in terms of having like some programming people, some user des designing people, and some product people, some biz dev people, and some people came to the five-week program with an idea already in mind. Some people were just hanging out. And there were th several ways that people ended up um, graduating. One of them was I found my idea is not the one that I want to work on. I found the team. I was looking for that programmer or I was looking for that biz dev person. Someone else was like, I actually found an idea that I'm excited about and I'm going to go ahead. And then others were like, actually, entrepreneurship is not for me. And just owning that and feeling like it's comfortable, it's, you know, people are saying like, go, go out there and become your own entrepreneur. There, there are tons of entrepreneurs and we're gonna get Coca-Cola and more of them. And uh, it's okay, like entrepreneurship is not for everyone and that's why you become an angel. You know, it's another way to actually be, um, have your finger on the pulse, feel like you're part of a community, you're contributing to the entrepreneurial ecosystem in a different way. So I'll leave you with that. The second thing is, if you already don't have a Twitter account, please, please, please <laughs> get That's Yes Tess. Song. And Lauren too, I heard. Lauren at Repurpose. And get it. It's, it's really like this 360 degree place where you can be yourself, your 360 degree self. You can connect with people. It really democratizes access. You know, I've known people who have been able to secure funding via a tweet because people get tons. You all get tons of email. You know, like if you actually are able to connect with someone, and even if you're still in listening mood and you want to just learn, you know, like just follow uh, Jacqueline Novogratz from Acumen Fund is there. SVN is there. Um, Jamie Knack from Women. Um, uh, who who uh, curated and created today is there? You know, it's a really great way for you to to f know what's happening. Hashtags that I would invite you to check out: Susty, S U S T Y for sustainable. Obviously, CSR Green, Imp In, Inv. IMP, INV is really good for impact investing. Just, you know, feel free if you have any other questions to reach out to me. I'm a huge promoter and advocate of, of, of um, tweeting. And then the third thing that I, I'll just leave you with is um, 
it, we're still broken in terms of thinking in binaries, you know, like it's either good, either you do good or you do well. And we talk about it in terms of branding. We do good and do well. However, it's really hard for people to, to get the hybrid venture. And so even in terms of yourselves, I, I know some people who are even impact investors and they still have like, they're, they still have conversations about like, well, I'm, I'm impact first, I'm finance first. Like we still are trying to create that division. So I just say, get comfortable with the hybrid. You know, for me it was easy, I'm half Colombian, half Italian. So, you know, I grew up in the hybrid, you know? For some people it's about getting more comfortable about the grays, you know, like the, the ambiguity. And, and the more comfortable we are with the ambiguity, the more my hope is that social enterprise, hybrid business models will really have a chance. I guess what I would say is truly live your values and think about that in every choice that you make um, and every decision you make. For me, you know, to be able to, to be in a situation professionally where I get to help other people succeed, where I get to mentor and advise, if someone had told me, gee, Kelly, you're going to do this as a career, I'd be like, you're, you're on crack, like that job, that job doesn't exist. I had to create that job. Did I always wanna have a C-suite job? Absolutely. And it dawned on me, you know, last year, it's like, oh, I finally have the corner office. Okay, it's the middle of a, you know, co-working space and it's my desk, but it's, <laughs> that is the new corner office. But, you know, live, and I wanna really say that, I wanna, and when I come back to some of this is, is the live your values. What is in your investment portfolio? Right? Are you living what is in there? It is a reflective of what your values are, right? If you are, gee, I wanna see women in leadership, are you taking that active step? I wanna see more fill in the blank. Are you actively pursuing that from your investment account, right, down to the way you shop every week? So I did this when I was speaking at a panel at Google, and it was a panel on women on corporate boards, and I got this room, full of um, Google employees. And I said, so anyone shop at Anthropology? All these hands go up, because there's an Anthropology store downstairs. I said, there's no women in senior management, and they have proactively said they are not interested in seeing anyone who looks in this, like anyone in this room, sorry to the men at the back, on their corporate board. Why the hell would you want to spend your money there? If it doesn't reflect your values and the world that you want to see, it may be cheaper, it may be easier, it may be cute, right? Want that little sweater, whatever it is. Why are you spending your money there? And I think we need to actively, all of us say, what is the world we want to see and how am I gonna play a role? And for me, I mean, you may be saying, well, I'm not Donald Trump or I'm not you know, so-and-so and I don't have Marissa Mayer's paycheck it doesn't take that much money. For a lot of what we're talking about and the commitment when I did the pipeline fund was $5,000. Think about what you're writing checks for, you know, how many rubber chicken dinners do we all have to go to, you know, on an annual basis? You know, think about if you said, you know what, instead of doing that, I'm going to put it over here. And the personal change and impact doing the pipeline fund had for me it was like, a, you know, things happen at the right time for the right reason. It cracked open a whole lot of things. And to be in a place now where, yes, as Lauren said, it is bloody scary on a daily basis because not only am I an angel investor, you know, with sort of net worth on the line that way, I am an entrepreneur with net worth on the line that way. And I look at myself in the mirror and I say, what is the worst thing that could happen to me? I could go back and practice CMBS. Okay, that's the worst thing that could happen to me. I could go back and be practicing as a lawyer. And you look yourself in the mirror, you dive, you know, instead of succumbing to that fear, you dive into it and you pursue it. But I just wanna leave you with live your values fully and then we're gonna see the change we wanna happen in the world. Well, uh, thank you, Kelly. That's a great way uh, to wrap this up because I see that we're going on to the next session.